All right, so we know about the Pythagorean theorem now, and what we're going to do next is not just find the hypotenuse, but find any side of a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. So it says, first off, remember the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem, I'll write that down again, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And just so we remember, uh, a and b are the legs of the triangle. They're the ones that are attached to that 90 degree angle. So I'm just going to put leg, leg underneath both of those. And C is always the longest side of a right triangle. And we call that the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. All right. So if, it says here, if we give you the length of the hypotenuse, how would you figure out the other side length? Any ideas? Well, you guys know if you have an equation, like the Pythagorean theorem is an equation, and if there's only one thing missing, you can solve an equation for that. You, you can get that thing by itself to solve for the missing piece. And that's exactly what these steps here say to do. It says label the sides of your triangle. Make sure that you have the hypotenuse labeled correctly. Remember, that's the one that's not touching the right angle. Put all your values into the formula in the correct spots. And then as you're solving, make sure that if it's for a side length and not the hypotenuse, uh, that you subtract to solve. So I'll show you a couple examples here, or a few examples here. Uh, for the first one, you know, first thing I asked you on the last lesson was, you know, what's A, what's B? Right, those are the legs of the triangle. So I'm going to write that down first. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Those are, A and B are the ones that uh, are attached to that 90 degree angle. Well, in this case, that's where our X is. So that's okay. And that can be A. So that, we'll say that's X squared plus uh, 21 squared equals. And then this time I know C. I know the hypotenuse. It's the one that's not touching the right angle, and that's 29. So it's 29 squared. All right, so now it's time to simplify what I can. You can't, can't simplify x squared, so I'm just going to bring it down, x squared. I can do 21 squared. Uh, 21 squared is 441. I should not have had to use my calculator for that. Oh, well. Uh, 441, and then 29 squared. 29 squared is 800 and 41. And now look what we've got, guys. You can solve this equation, right? All I have to do is subtract 441 from both sides, and that gets me, scroll down a little bit, x squared equals 841 minus 441 is 400. And then the opposite of squaring a number, we talked about this last week, or for the last lesson, geez is the opposite of um, squaring a number is to take the square root. So to get that x by itself, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and that gets the x alone. The square root of 400 is 20. So I got x equals 20 for that first one. Okay. Again, an easy way to check yourself on your answers here is just still make sure that your hypotenuse is the longest length. And 29 is longer than 20 and 21. So. I did okay on that one as far as making sure that the hypotenuse stayed the longest side. Okay, For this next triangle, same thing. Okay, Identify what A and B are. Those are the sides that are attached to that 90 degree angle. So I've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This time, um, 7, you know, I'll use 7 as A, so it's 7 squared plus B is just labeled as X, so it's just X squared and then C is 14, so 14 squared, all right? And then simplify what you can. I can simplify 7 squared. 7 times 7 is 49. X squared is just going to stay X squared. And then 14 squared, remember we listed out those first 15 perfect squares. It was 196. And now solve this equation. This is, this is just solving any, any other equation. You know to do the opposite, so I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides to get rid of it, to get the x squared by itself. And that leaves me with 
x squared equals uh, 196 minus 49 is 147. Oh, geez. Shouldn't have had to do, use my calculator for that one either. Uh, and then uh, the opposite of squaring a number is to take the square root of both sides. And the square root of 147, and again just round to the nearest tenth, just like we did on that last lesson, is 12.1, which makes sense. Um, we know 12 times 12 is 144, and this is barely over that, right? 147 is really close. So 12.1, that answer makes sense. Now for this last one, you know, I'm going to do the same thing. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then I'm going to fill in what I know. In this case, A is 14.1. I'll just say, I mean, it's interchangeable. It doesn't matter which one you say is A and which one you say is B. Um, they're the legs of the right angle that make up that, I mean, they're the legs of the right triangle that make up that right angle. So I'm going to say 14.1 squared plus X squared equals 15 squared. All right, well, when I do 14.1 squared, so I'm going to simplify what I can, I get 198.81 plus x squared equals 225. And then to get that x squared by itself, I'm going to subtract 198.81 from both sides. So minus 198.81 minus 198.81. And when I do that, I get that x squared equals 26.19. And then to get the x all the way by itself, the opposite of squaring a number is taking the square root. So I take the square root of x squared. and I take the square root of 26.19. And again, just round your answer to the nearest tenth. Uh, that's going to give us 5.1. Okay. So some example word problems here now. Same thing. It's really difficult to keep track of the numbers. Now that um, it could be the hypotenuse that's missing, it could be one of the legs that's missing. Um, it's funny, we're talking about pirates, Captain Barbosa here, and... Uh, legs missing. Uh, but make sure you draw a picture. It's, it's very important to draw a picture now. That way you can just keep track of all the numbers and not mix up where they where they go. Okay, So we got Captain Barbosa is on a geocache hunt. His GPS tells him that he is 40 meters away from the treasure. He walks 24 meters due west. I'm going to go 24 meters due west. He's 40 meters away from the treasure. West is this way. And how far was that? That was 24. Okay. Remember, he was 40 meters away to start with. The GPS compass tells him that now the treasure is due south from where he is standing. So it's somewhere here, right? Well, I know when he started, he was 40 away. So when I connect those, look what I've got here. I've got a right angle. I've got a right triangle. Okay. What I don't have is this, how far, the distance that he has to go south. So how far south does he need to go to find it? What is the unknown? I just actually said it. Oops. Um, how far south? How far south? He needs to go. He needs to travel. So write the equation and plug in what you know. So let's write our equation. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A in this case we'll say is X. That's one of the sides that makes up that 90 degree angle. B in this case could be 24 or is 24. And C is 40. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Solve what you can. 24 squared is 576. So I have X squared plus 576 equals 40 squared is 1600 and 
shouldn't have used my calculator for that either. But here we go. Solve this equation just like you guys know how to. Subtract 576 from both sides. And that gets us x squared equals uh, minus 576 and 24. So 1024. Uh, to get the x by itself, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And that gets me, I'm going to put my answer over here, 32 meters. So he's actually 32 meters away. He has to go 32 meters south. Okay. All right. And then this last one says a square has an area of 625 square feet. What is the length of the diagonal? So a square has an area of 625 square feet. That means boom, 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 boom. All of this is 625 square feet. Well, I know to find area, I do length times width, and I know for a square, all the sides equal the same. So if I just take the square root of this, it'll tell me what the side lengths are. And that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to take the square root of that, the square root of 625 is 25. So this is 25, this is 25, this is 25, and this is 25. Now if it's asking me to find the diagonal, boom, there's my right triangle. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that's 25 squared plus 25 squared is going to equal to X squared. All right? Well, we already know 25 squared is 625. So this is really 625 plus 625 equals x squared, and 625 plus itself is 1,250. The opposite of squaring a number, this is the last step, is to take the square root. So the square root of 1,250 is 35.2. 35.35, which means it's 35.4 feet is what I get when I take the square root of 1,050. Okay. So again, use the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, A and B are the sides that are attached to the right angle. C, the hypotenuse, doesn't touch the right angle. Okay. It's an easy way to remember it. Um, plug in what you know, use the Pythagorean theorem, write it down, plug in what you know, and then solve for what you don't. If you have any questions, you know the drill. Make sure you ask your teacher.